I used to be a go-go dancer for nine years. And then I had a friend that stopped doing that and uh, stop, uh, and started doing this. And after a while, she said, girl, you know, you need to try this. And I was very skeptical up until, because she was also independent, up until I went into her room while she was streaming, staying in a corner uh, outside of the camera range. And I was seeing what she was doing. She was very mannered, polite. She knew how to handle the crowd, so to say. And I liked that. She was able to impose. She was demanding respect and she was receiving it. And I said, okay, I think I can do this. And that's how Miss Charlotte started because that was my initial nickname. How long ago was that? Oh, uh, on October 1st, it's going to be six years. So almost six years. Wow. What I like about your story, which I think is a really powerful point that a lot of people have is that when they first hear about the industry or camming, they have like an idea about what it is. And usually that idea is, is very different from the truth of it is, especially on Jasmine, you know, like you went into her room while she was working. And like you said, you saw that there is actually a very respectful relationship that was going on between her and the members. Yes, that is true. And um, camming it, it kind of has its own label, not actually in a good way. However, what I've learned along the years is that webcamming has changed. Not everything is related to sexuality. And most of the big, the biggest income comes without using your sexuality, but using your mind and your personality. And that's what most people don't understand. However, I'm not the type of woman that would seek approval for someone, for example. Yeah, that's really, really beautifully said. And I think it's really important for this other side of the industry to be known, you know, like you just said, and, and you are one of the top earners on Jasmine. And so you would know. And so to hear you say as one of the top earners that a lot of times, a lot of the financial success on the platform comes from not even using your sexuality. To be honest, I think not to be full of myself or something, I but I think on 90% of all of my privates, I don't even go topless. It's all about talking or uh, me because I chose to be a mistress, a dominant person. I get to handle my members, if I may say so. And that's kind of ironically because everyone thinks everything is related to sex. But now I have members that come to me just to complain about their wives or to tell me how their day were or just pretty much because they got bored or they just want to talk with someone and just want to share how their day was. So I think three weeks ago, I had a member that he called me on the video call uh, and we stayed for like six hours and he stayed up until I fall asleep. And then I woke up and I'm like, oh my God, I apologize. And he said, no worries. I loved uh, watching you sleeping. <laughs> I said, okay, thank you. <laughs> I've heard that that is like every model's dream is to let a, a member just let them sleep. <laughs> yeah, he, didn't want, he didn't want it to bother me. And I felt so embarrassed for falling asleep, but he didn't say like, hey, wake up. Hey, <laughs> he just let me, let me do my thing. And <laughs> I was thankful for that. I will say something that it's just my opinion. It all depends how you sell yourself, right? If, for example, I stay like this, dress like this in free chat, right? And you see that I'm not naked. However, I'm not fully clothed. Uh, clothed. Uh, you kind of see um, my personality and you kind of see that I'm, I'm not trying to lure you, touching myself and so on. And so I attract a certain range of members. However, if I would be... Uh, almost naked, teasing you and so on, I would attack, uh, attack, I would attract members that would just want my sexuality. That's nothing wrong with that. It's what you want to represent, how you want people to see you as a person around here when you're doing your job. That's why there are a lot of types of 
members, but for every type of member, there is a type of model because there are thousands of us and we each have our own unique style. I think that's really beautiful. And I really like that you're saying that because I think that that helps models realize that, you know, there's enough members, I guess, for everyone and that you don't really need, well, there's, yeah, there's a healthy competition. You don't need to be in a, a nasty competition with the other models. And I think you actually are a really good example with this. Um, I was in Portugal with you and several other models for the live cam awards. And you developed a really, really close friendship with two other models that are kind of considered what people would consider your competition, right? Yes, that's true. And we did be become friends during the 22 uh, contest. Um, it's about Mallory and Natasha Irene. Uh, I highly respect these girls along with many others. However, our friendship is strong because we have de developed a sort of a connection. We understand each other. If one of us is down and have uh, problems fighting with a member or so, because it happens, we help each other and we say, hey, calm down, try to talk to him, try to do this, try to do that. And we are there for one another because in this industry, I, I believe that there is room for everyone. Yeah, and that's really classy and elegant approach. Um, that's something else I've really noticed about you and, and other models on Jasmine. But one thing that shines in you is your elegance, really. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I think that once you get to a certain age, you get wiser. And, <laughs> you know, uh, it's like those things that you find on the internet. When you're 25, you just want to be rolling. <laughs> you want to go to the clubs. When, after your 30s, I will be 33 in about three days. Uh, you just say, oh, my God, I just need a glass of wine, sit on the couch, watch a move, movie with my dog, and do nothing. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. So you get wiser. You you see life in a different perspective. That's why I don't judge some of the behaviors of some girls around here, but I try to understand them based upon their age. Yes. You know, I, I, I'm not even kidding you. I was just having this thought the other day. Um, I'm also in my early 30s and I, one thing I was thinking that's the difference is now that I'm a little bit older, I care a little bit less about wanting everyone to like me or people please. Yeah. Like me. And I feel so much more relaxed about it because I feel like I can just be, be more authentic and it's okay. It's okay. If not everyone likes me, I'm okay with that. And that's one of the beauties I feel like of, of getting older, you become more relaxed, you know, and like you said, wiser. Yes. Um, I see many models here after a certain age, they hide their real age. Um, I would not do that. I'm proud of with my age. I'm happy, blessed, lucky that I get to live another year and then another year and then another year. It's a blessing. It's a gift. So what if I get wrinkles? So what if sometimes I'm not going to be as pretty as I am now? It's okay. It's okay to, to, to get old. It's okay to be you we don't have to try to look our best for others we should always try to look our best and be our best for us be the be best version of ourselves every day and if someone is able to achieve that i think that's one of the main goals in life you mentioned that you're an independent model have you always been yes yes always and that's why i've explained you my beginning here people assumed that because i've got this far oh, you surely went to a studio that has taught you what to do. No, I taught myself what to do. I looked at, at the girls oh, and I took examples from some girls that I thought that they are similar to me. And day by day, you learn. I didn't got to earn so much and have this kind of income all the time. No, I even stayed for nine hours and do almost nothing, but I kept going on. That's the beauty of it. In life, you never go so far if you don't always uh, stand up when you're on the ground. 
And I think the experience at a point helps you more than you could ever think. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, as we've mentioned, you are one of the top models on Jasmine and you, you literally actually won the top model contest on Jasmine and you have never been with a studio. You've always been independent. What do you think has been some of the keys to your success? Um, always, but always doing those at least 80 hours. I mean, back in the days right now, when I have my account raised up, I can afford not to do those 80 hours. But until I got to a certain point that I was here, I worked so much. You have no idea there. I remember there was a period because, you know, period lasts uh, two weeks, 14 days. And in a period, I even worked 240 hours. Wow. I, I am a beast <laughs> when it comes to achieving something that I want. It was the previous awards when it was with the votes and so on. So I worked so much. It, I, I felt so exhausted that week. <laughs> I can <laughs> imagine. <laughs> so if you want to achieve something, um, I think that you should work for what you want. For example, you see the tree in front of you and the apples are here. You just have to learn how, how uh, high you should jump before to reach those apples. If you quit, and if you jump 10 times and then you say, okay, I'm not able to do it. And then you quit, you go home. You probably deserve your fate. That's what happens with most of the models. They create, create an account. They see that they don't get uh, the income that they would have expected. And then they quit. I had days when I was making $2, $2. But the next day you would see me again online and I was like, hello, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you have to keep going on. And one day, just one day, maybe luck will strike at your door and everything's going to settle nicely and smoothly for everything that you have worked for. <laughs> There's this quote that luck favors the prepared, you know, like luck favors hard work. So if you keep working hard, eventually luck will favor you. Um, yes, because it's also about luck, not just hard work. It's how you represent yourself. If you find the right members still like you for who you are. Um, there were very great members on this website that, came across my room and they had a private with me for like 10 or 15 minutes. And then they, they would say, oh, okay, well, I guess I'm going to see you around. And then they would go to another model that I probably knew. And he would stay for hours in her private. Why? Because it's all about taste. He liked that model more than me. And he uh, related to her. He, he found a certain connection to that model that he could not find with me. So Sometimes it's also about luck and about the member's taste. Can you tell me that you put 240 hours into a period? Putting in that level of dedication and that level of work and keep rising even when you fall down, like you said, some days where you're making zero to two dollars and you come back on the next day with a smile on your face, that is seriously the, the spirit of a champion. Like I said, it's like Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant. <laughs> thank you I feel flattered I I love to stay humble uh, that's how my parents taught me and that's how my life taught me never think too high about yourself because one day you're here and the next day you can't be here you never know what life prepares for you so always be humble and stay with your feet on the ground never lose sight of who you are and where you come from yeah I agree that's really important and and that energy and attitude has probably played a role in your success. Thank you. I want to ask you, what would you say? And you can answer honestly, <laughs> what is your favorite part of your career? What do you like the most about being a cam girl, Jasmine girl? Hmm. Let's say Jasmine girl, because I would not choose to work on another website, any other website. I'm, it's not that I'm comfortable here. I love this website. It represents me and 
uh, I would work only here. Uh, what I like the most, that it basically changed my life. Mm. I will always admit that from a simple girl on, on a small hometown, I became so independent in so many ways I could have never imagined. I mean, my life turned like this. I mean, I look back at how I was five years, six years ago before starting this, and I look at the life that I am living now. I am living my dream. I love Jasmine for um, open up the doors for me so I can just go in and work my way. And I am grateful. I am not one of those people that wakes up every day and say, oh shit, I gotta go to work. Pardon my language. <laughs> I'm not like that. I just wake up and I put on my makeup, go online with a smile. If it works out for a couple of hours, that's fine. I continue. If not, I take a break and I come back on. For me, it's not a mental stress to log in. It's a pleasure because it's the life that I have right now and Jasmine is the one that I have to thank for, aside from the hard work. Yeah, really beautiful answer. Thank you. <laughs> um, you mentioned that probably your favorite aspect of being a Jasmine girl and your career is the fact that it changed your life. And, yes. and in five, six years, that's actually, yeah, that's a relatively short amount of time, you know. Um, I'm curious. Do you feel like you have grown or changed as a woman since joining the platform? Yes, 1000%. Yes, I am more confident because you see being a mistress here playing this role, it gives you that sort of confidence, that dominance. Right now, I am able to say no to a person that back in the days I would have said, um, I don't know. Um, I would think about it or, you know, I don't think it's nice what you have done or right now, if I do not like what you do, I say, what has gotten into you? Why would you do that? I mean, I confront you. I have more confidence than I ever had. And I like that about myself. I, it's like rediscovering myself. It's recreating myself because interacting for so many years with so many types of members of people, I guess I'm entitled to say that I have seen them all. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you. So you feel like, yeah, I mean, just having that different experience of sometimes being put in a position maybe where you have to set boundaries for yourself as maybe a form of self-love or self-care. Now you're more confident in doing that. Yes, 1000%. And I like that. Some people would find me too aggressive, but then again, I'm not for everyone. I have small, a small group of friends. I'm not um, a person that you would think, oh my God, Charlotte is having thousands of friends. No, I don't. But those that I surround her with, they know how I am. They know when I'm being cocky. They know when I'm being true. They know when I'm being um, funny. They know when I'm going on a on a rough time and no one should be near to me. <laughs> they know me and accept me for who I am with my, along with my flaws. And that's the most important aspect when you surround yourself with people. That's why I say that I'm not for everyone. But then again, not everyone is for me. So that's why at the moment, and I don't think it's going to change, I'm not seeking approval regarding my job or re regarding me as a person. What a beautifully free place to be living in. You know, like seriously, to have that mentality of really owning who you are and being okay with it and not feeling like you have to dim your light or shrink or people please everyone. It's so freeing to be in that place. Yes, it is. It is. And it's relieving. Very, very relieving. I, 
I'm not the person that would try to satisfy others. Then again, I don't want to also be satisfied. I just want you to be you. Don't try to impress me, but don't try to annoy me. Just be you. And then we're, we're going to both decide whether or not we like each other and we're going to stay friends. <laughs> okay. Yeah, absolutely. It's It sounds like you're really in this place where you're able to give and be yourself authentically and you're needing that from others. Um, and I can see why when you're choosing to be so authentic, you are going to, like you said, attract members that really, really like you for you and that are going to be really loyal because it, it becomes my guesses and, and correct me or tell me, but it sounds like while they are members and you are a professional model on the site. So there, there is a like a professional relationship to a degree maybe, but it sounds like there's also an authentic connection that develops. Oh, there's no doubt about that. Um, let me give you some examples. I have some members that comes to me for years now and I just do their daily fetishes and so on. And it's strictly professional. However, he comes to me because he likes how I am performing uh, that things that uh, that that thing that he likes. And there are some certain members that I just enter online, having a bun on my head, eating a pretzel, and being in my pajamas. And I'm like, "Hey, dude, how was your day? Oh my god, I had such an awful day today. A guy pissed me off, and so on." And then we just talk about life. I am being me and some of the members like that. They don't even like to, to see me with makeup when I would put that um, famous red lipstick because everyone knows Charlotte with red lipstick on her lips. Uh, he would say, oh my God, you've turned fugly again. Yeah, I did. <laughs> oh. That's what represents me. So uh, yeah, I have members that prefer me natural and just talking how I usually talk and sometimes getting annoyed and cursed and so on they would get amused by that we were talking earlier about confidence most of people especially nowadays with all this beauty interesting when you open up the Instagram what do you see hot men hot women everywhere everyone's beautiful this day uh, everyone is basically perfect there's no room to be ugly basically the world right now is telling you that you're not allowed to be ugly, fat, short, bald, or whatever. So because of this, because of the times that we're living, a lot of people lack confidence. And when they lack confidence, they lack the ability of making friends. They get shy. It's kind of like they have a blanket that they put on so others don't see them. And that's a shame. But it's the world that we're living and thank God that girls like us exist, for example, when they feel some sort of a connection, uh, relief. Um, I have a member that, for example, he calls me even when he fights with his boss, he, he would just call me on the video call and he would say, can you believe this guy? Oh my God, the audacity of him. And I would just say, okay, go on. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But, these are the times and fortunately a lot of the mm, relationships uh, model member are real not everything is about income for example me because i've gotten to a certain level right now i'm not looking at the numbers when the private is gone and just relaxed engaged with the member if he stays five minutes it's okay if he stays five hours that's also okay and i do not care if we have something going on then I'm very happy. That's why I say that I am not those type of people that wake up in the morning and say, oh my God, I got to go to work, you know, because I don't feel like I'm actually working with most of them. It's impossible to feel that way. Yeah, that's beautiful. And that's also an indication that you're, you're doing something that you're really aligned to do and that's good for you. You have the right personality for um, not everyone is meant for every job, including this job. But I want to go back to, you know, using the example of a member that just calls you when he's having problems with his boss. To me, that really, again, shows that companionship that that person is seeking. When you're having a bad day, you call your friends, 
you call a family member. And so to have a person who's calling you that shows you the, the level of companionship that you're bringing him and that he sees you in, you know? Yes, I find that very admirable and I feel lucky. You know, the true blessings in life are the type of people that you surround yourself. I know a lot of rich people that are so lonely and would give anything just to have friends or family. What's the point of having every material thing you could possibly desire, but being alone and have no one who to laugh with or no one who to share your uh, achievements, right? All those are useless. And I know so many people, including some of the neighbors that I have, for example, there's a family of three kids and they're so happy. They're just the other day, they were splashing with the pistol guns with waters and so on. And they were so happy. They have a modest income, but, but they do not care. I've never seen them complain about their income. I've never seen them asking for something. They just accept how they are and they are happy like that. And I'm very, very happy for that. Now that's what I consider someone being rich to be honest. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Because love is and peace, but love is the ultimate currency. And if those kids are being loved well, then of course, what else do they need as long as they have their basics, you know, but to have love is everything. And like you said, you could have the world and without love and feeling loved, even with all your riches, you're miserable. So what good is it? You know, that's true. I'm curious, you know, speaking of love and feeling loved, what do you, in your opinion, and with all of your experience, what do you think is the main driving force that is bringing members to the site? Is it just the sexual experience or are they seeking that connection or seeking more? What do you think it is? No, not at all. Many times I just receive random messages from members that I've never interacted like, are you single? Are you interested in getting married or having a boyfriend? And I'm like, okay, let's get to know each other first. I don't have time for that. I want a girlfriend. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, take me on a date first, so to say. <laughs> so, yeah. A lot of members are searching for that. Not everyone is seeking sexuality, just like some of the members of mine would uh, uh, would often tell me that, you know, if I just if I just wanted sex from you, I would have gone on a sexual uh, porn site and just masturbate on those. But if you see that I'm coming here and if I ask you how your day, Woman, I really mean it. How was your day? <laughs> and they, um, um, it's because I'm a woman, it's hard not to feel touched. You know, when you have someone asking you, he, he's paying you to ask you, how is your day? Or what did you eat today? Because sometimes I would tell them, I just cooked. And they would say, okay, and where's my picture? <laughs> Let me see what you cook, you know? It's more and more than that. That's why the uh, website also have, has that flirt area where you can go and find models just for that, just to connect, interact with them without using any sexuality. So um, I think this is very good for a lot of types of members. Also those that just seek sex, also those that are just lonely or others that wants to find a soulmate there are a lot of types of members. Hence, there are a lot of types of models. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I interviewed this uh, human connection expert and sexologist, psychologist. She's had a really long career for like 40 years. She created the, the sex toy brand, Dr. Eve. Okay. And her name is uh, Dr. Wasserman. And she told me that 
she believes that a lot of members that are using platforms like Live Jasmine, a lot of times in their childhood, they had like traumatic experiences around feeling not heard and not seen or cared about. And she feels like what they're actually playing out here is beyond sexual fantasy. It's actually to get those childhood needs met of feeling heard and seen and cared about. And I'm curious what you think about that. Well, there is a lot of truth in that because just going to give you an example. Uh, because I'm dominant, I have members with wild, crazy, different fetishes. And they can't expose themselves into the society. They can't say uh, to their friends, like, um, I love to see a woman that would stay with her arms like this and just watch her armpits. I love that. That excites me the most. I love it. It turns me on. Another person would say, are you out of your mind? Armpits, what's that, you know? And because they know that the rejection is already there and uh, that's why they're not even exposing the, themselves. They're hiding from the society and come here to just take that jacket off and be themselves. They are able to come into my private and would say, do you mind if you would just lift up your arms? I just want to take a look at your armpits. So multiple times of the times I just stay in private with my uh, arms like this and he would take a look at my armpits, but he can't tell that to his wife. He can't tell that to his brother, for example, or to his colleague, because everyone would judge him and he would be labeled as a weirdo, you know. That's why our jobs exist. I, I think everything in this life is connected and everything happens for a reason. Even these websites are here for a reason to also fulfill and make people like this guy, for example, happy and content and not gather all that frustration inside of him because he can't be understood, if that makes any sense to you. Oh my goodness. Absolutely. What you're providing is such a service because people basically go, can, are able to go to you and show these super vulnerable, super hidden parts of themselves and be almost like held in that, like, because you're, you're, you're not judging them. You're not hurting them over it. You're almost validating, like accepting it. And to feel accepted, in my opinion, is is one of the most healing and powerful ex feelings we can have. I don't, I want to um, say just one point. I accept them because I'm the type of person that doesn't judge no one. I'm not accepting them because they're paying me and I say, oh my God, I have to accept them for that. No, it's different. Who am I to judge that person what does that what did that person ever did to me wrong so i can judge him or am i that uh, important that i should be judging him no this is how he was born this is what he likes this is him this is what represents him for example why would i judge him so the fact that he comes here to pay me it's because this is a service and because no one else would actually care about his doll connection or collection or if they would say oh my god yeah it's nice behind his back he would say what a freaking weirdo you know most likely yes yes because these things just aren't common so we don't know how to deal with them but but back to your point that you just you naturally don't judge people. That's not your nature. I think that that is one of the attributes that probably just naturally makes you um, a great model and does just naturally make you great for this job. Because like we've kind of talked about, not everyone is built for this, you know, even if they may want to do it, you have to have certain attributes, just like you know, if you want to play in the NBA, that's great. I might want to play in the NBA, but I don't have the right attributes to do it. You know, not tall enough. I don't, you know, all those things. The, <laughs> the ironic part, uh, funny you said that because I'm just going to tell you an example. Uh, at the beginning of the interview, you asked me how I started. And I told you that a friend of mine who used to be a go-go dancer, uh, 
opened up this account for me and showed me what it is. Well, this job is not for her. She's not activating. She would be on and off. And when she would be on, she would just get extremely mad. <laughs> she would throw things. She would not stand nothing. And I would calm her down. And I said, take a break, <laughs> you know, chill. No, I can't stand. I don't like it. I know. And then she reorientated. And right now she's a fitness instructor. Oh, and I did yeah. ask her, I think last week. And I said, have you considered going online again? Oh, no. I'm good as I am. No, thank you. That's not for me. It's for you. I'm happy that I got to help you. I'm proud of you, of how far you've gotten. But don't mention that to me again. I said, okay, fine. <laughs> so see, that's why I think that some things never happen without a reason. This job was not for her, but her purpose in this way was to create me in a way, if that makes any sense to you. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. It's again, just more evidence, which I think we all are seeing more and more in this magical life that every single thing happens for a reason. And everything that happens is leading us into the next step in our lives all the time, every time without fail. I, I mean, believe that. Don't get me wrong. Not even I knew <laughs> that life would get me here. I mean, if, I would go back six or seven years ago and someone would tell me, you're going to be a cam girl and you're going to be a, success, a successful one. I would, <laughs> I would have laughed. You have no idea how much I would have laughed because I will admit, just like other people, I thought that camming, it's, you know, it's, it's not for me. Up until I saw my friend that day and that day changed my whole perspective about this. And I said, okay, I can do this because not everything has to be related to sexuality. And that's how you also discover yourself. You, you never know uh, where life takes you and where you're going to end up. For example, perhaps you wanted to be a singer and you ended up being a football coach, you know, because that was your call. That was where life was leading you. Sometimes our dreams are not in the same correlation with what path we have to take. A hundred percent. Yeah, that's so true. Until, because sometimes it's like, we're still growing into the people that we're meant to be. So we think we want this thing, but as we develop further and grow and learn, we we're kind of pushed towards our destiny. That's my thought, you know? That is true. Indeed. Very beautiful. Um, I want to ask you, you know, I have a couple more questions, but the first one is, do you feel like being on Jasmine and interacting with the members, you know, I know sometimes it's not sexual, it's more connection based, and sometimes it is sexual. Do you feel like you've learned more about your own sexuality from some of these experiences? Yes. For example, right now, I really know what I don't like, <laughs> what I like. And what I might try, what I might be able to try, you know, because sometimes these projects are pushing your limits and perhaps you are also rediscovering yourself in this part. I have rediscovered that I really don't like some certain things <laughs> and I've discovered that I'm open up to some certain things that I would have not even considered, for example. But that also is kind of like connected to the growth, to the fact that years has passed and you have changed as a person. You have became more mature. Yeah, really well said. Do you feel like you have taught your members things about maybe how to treat a woman, how to maybe get along better with their wife or help them, of course, help them explore their sexuality, but taught them things in those areas? Yes. Um, I one time did what probably other models would would not agree or would not do that. Um, I made a member quit LJ, but not because LJ was wrong for him, but because his marriage uh, uh, was dysfunctional. So what happened, let me, how should I explain this? He loved his wife. The, they were in love. It's just that they were neglecting each other. And he would come here 
sexually frustrated and he the first times he would come he, to, to me just with uh, sexually uh, sexual purposes and a long time we've also got to chat and I've got to discover him and why he he is that certain way up until the point that our privates were only uh, about the conversations and he would complain that his wife comes after after work and he just plays herself in bed uh, she just uh, turns around not even kiss him good night and so on and he said he do he does not like that then i said okay have you bought her flowers he said what but it's not woman's day when is the last time that you bought her flowers uh i don't know exactly does she like sweets well yeah she she likes sweets not she's not crazy about them okay put a chocolate on her pillow just small gestures like for example don't let her wash the dishes when he comes from work and she's exhausted because when she's coming from work exhausted she's also washing the dinner the, the the dishes and putting you the dinner on your table of course that woman does not want to have a, a sexual relationship with you because she's just too exhausted to have one not that she does not want you or like you she's just so beat from a hard day of working try to do some of her chores and try to make her feel important even after 14 years of marriage because that's how long they they have been together and when these things has uh, he, when he, when he started doing those things their relationship it's kind of like they built up uh, the flames again and at one point he said you know I come with a sad news. And I said, okay, who died? <laughs> and he said, no, I have to quit LJ. And I said, okay, why? Because, you know, right now I'm a very, I'm in a very happy place with my wife. We're so in love. Everything going, it's going smoothly. And I have to thank you for it. However, I do not want to continue because I would feel that I would, in a way, cheat, cheating on my wife. And I said, go. I respect your decision and I, I was happy that I was in that moment to help him because nothing happens for a reason and somehow from all of these models he ended up in my room and these are one of the rare moments when I'm glad that a member is quitting LJ if you know what I mean. Absolutely and again there's so many things about that story where it's it's again like not chance but that destiny thing like of course, you know he had just happened to end up in your room and you gave him incredible advice and that invite advice ended up helping to heal his marriage and you know they both probably he learned okay i need to appreciate her a little bit more which in turn because you're right if a woman is exhausted and resentful she's not going to be turned on for you i'm sorry <laughs> like but if you yeah her feel appreciated and and give her some space to rest and not be so exhausted you know she'll start being turned on again that was incredible advice and I feel like I'm curious you know is that fulfilling emotionally for you to know that you're really making an impact in people's lives like your job is a direct impact on people Yes, I loved that. Even though I was losing an income, right? Because <laughs> he was paying me to talk with me. That uh, what I did for him was more important than if he would have spent it thousands on me, because he appreciated me for the help that I have done. And just as a human being, don't you feel good when you know that you're doing something good for others, even if it's just a small advice or just a plate of food or just um, holding a, uh, an old woman to cross the street? It, it gives you that satisfaction that money cannot buy. And LJ is also very good in these kind of moments because without knowing, it's not everything here is about income. It's also about helping people rediscover themselves, saving some situations, for example, and not leaving people frustrated because they can't be heard or understood. Yeah, you know, you said a, a line that I really like, which is a feeling of satisfaction that money cannot buy. 
Yes. And it's this emphasis on, again, you know, you can have all the riches in the world, but if you don't have that feeling of peace or satisfaction, what good is it if you don't feel good, you know, and focusing on those beautiful things is really important. You know, you never know what happens after you die, if you get reincarnated or not. But if you live this life that you're having now, and if you're happy, I think no one is going to die sad. You never, you, I mean, I've never seen a dead person taking the belongings uh, with him on the ground, you know. We as people work so much nowadays, nine to five, nine to five, every day, every day. And we lose track of everything that's essential, family, just have a laugh, uh, go to a picnic, do things that makes you happy. Because when you leave this earth, you're going to leave like you came, basically with nothing, just a suit on and that's it. I know it sounds drastic and dramatic when I say it. Uh, however, it is the truth. And especially in the last year, I've been thinking extremely, extremely deep when it comes to these things. It's not fulfilling your financial needs only, but also fulfilling your soul. I'm not going to be a hypocrite and say that, uh, oh, financial needs uh, don't count. It's okay to 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 be poor i would not want to go there however i don't consider that money is everything i like to make a balance between my soul and my material needs that is so important so important i love that you know that yeah there's financial fulfillment but there's also soul fulfillment i think in some areas, we have come too far away from making that a priority, and we are focusing too much on just material needs. And look at what that is doing to our hearts, our emotions. So many people have depression, anxiety, and all of that. So that's really beautiful what you shared. And I'm curious, you know, speaking of making sure you're happy, while this can be a very you know, fun job. It's also a lot of work and it can be hard, especially when you're dealing with people that are difficult or maybe have really heavy problems. And your job is really to listen and be there for them. I don't want it to be lost that models do take on a lot. I think that um, a lot of people maybe don't think about that, but I'm curious, how do you make sure that you take care of yourself in the process? And and is it hard sometimes? Well, for example, when I go online, I put a daily goal, right? I try my best to achieve it. And in 90% of the times I achieve it. And those 10% of the times when I don't achieve my daily goal, I say, okay, there were days when I exceeded my goal. So that compensates. So I'm fine. And I just go offline. It's, it's good to know where you're at and what gets you satisfied i'm not saying that you should not aim higher it's just that don't aim higher than you can reach if you stay on that line of floating then life will give you more than you have expected i really like how you said that i'm going to remember that don't aim higher than what you can reach because yeah it's like you could burn yourself out you could hurt yourself doing that overwork um do you feel like that has been a strategy that's kind of kept you at peace and in balance and prevented you from burning out from working too much um yes i mean i when i started this i've never said to myself oh i hope one day i'm gonna have rich members one day i'm gonna have rich members no i didn't know what happened it was all new but I just kept going on because I wanted to see where it ends, where it goes. And somehow life, experience, hard work has somehow worked together and I made it. Even I'm shocked, believe it or not. I wake up every day and I, I, I am so grateful to the universe for everything that I have in my life. 
so happy and I, I don't even ask why me because I don't like to to reject what I received I'm a karmic person but it's very good to be grateful because when you're grateful and when you're willing to help others when it comes to small things on a daily regular basis that's when life gives you more so I'm just going to see I'm going to give you an example um I just made order in my closet and I had two uh, heavy bags of uh, clothing that I was not wearing them anymore. So I decided to uh, give them to the girl that is doing my nails because she has a cousin and that cousin is in need. She doesn't have plans to buy her, buy new clothes and so on. And I just gave her those bags and I said, God bless you and uh, good luck and everything. And that day I had a member that came to me and tip, uh, tipped me 7,000 uh, 17,000 credits in that day, just like that. Every time I do an act of goodwill from my heart, I swear there was not a time when I would log in and I would make little money. I'm not doing this for this purpose, but I, I did notice that every time I did a, an act of goodwill, I have luck online that day. I don't know how this world works, but this is how I am. Or because I, I told you that I'm not a perfect person, when I would gossip someone and I would say, oh, look at her or stuff like this, because I would even do that. I'm a woman and uh, I'm not ashamed to admit it. Uh, only bad things would happen. Like, I don't know, uh, the bill would come higher on the gases or I, I don't know, something breaks down uh, in my kitchen and I need to replace it. And I said, okay, karma good, works <laughs> very well on me. <laughs> Well, it's good that you've seen that because yeah, that's in your benefit, you know, when you just, it's really beautiful because, you know, in order to give, you have to have your heart open. So when you clean out your closet and you have an open heart and you just give from your heart, those things. And then, like you said, the universe gives back, you know what I mean? And Yes. Yeah, it just proves this law of what you give is what you get always. And so when you give love, you're going to get love. And that could be in a million different ways. You know, it could be 17,000 credit tip. I mean, wow, you know, <laughs> or, or whatever, you know, the universe decides. And yeah, that's really beautiful. And I also think you have to have a pretty open heart to be good at this job because it is a job where you deal with people and people respond much better to uh, love and an open heart. True. However, because of my character online, I'm seen and perceived as a cruel person. Don't get me wrong. I like that because it means people are afraid of me and they would not step on me. <laughs> <laughs> However, I do open up myself fully to those members that are willing to see me without my jacket because me being there very serious and being like this it's also a character it's not that I'm that I'm actually like that but it's just me being dominant and if I see someone that's willing to just uh not just to see the book but to also read it then go ahead and read me I have, I'm fine with that but when someone comes just strictly for business I treat you as a business and that's it <laughs> Yeah, that's really well said. I'm curious if there's anything about this industry or live Jasmine or your experience that we haven't talked about, but you want to share. Probably, I know it's a sensitive topic and I usually avoid talking it. The jealousy between the models. Mm -hmm. I've seen it many times. I've seen rudeness and free uh, bad things for nothing and the only thing that I'm saying to myself is why there is room for everyone models that would fight over members attack each other call themselves names and so on if someone is lucky I've seen models that were here when I was here and I would admire them so much 
so much. And I said, oh my God, look at that woman. She's so lucky. Oh my God, good for her. I was never envious. And I'm the type of woman that admires beauty. Uh, if I see models that are beautiful, I'm like, oh my God, look at her. Look at those eyes. Look at the way that she placed the makeup on herself or, or look at that outfit. I love to admire and I love to learn from some of them. Even I go as a guest and I watch them. I love learning about those that for me are idols. And I like that. And instead of insulting one another, I think we should learn from one another because there's room for everyone. So I'm really happy that you said it because I think that by speaking on it and, you know, sharing your honest truth, this is the way to hopefully start to dispel some of that and help people realize that, yes, there may be some competition on Jasmine, but one model's success and the more successful the platform is means the more successful everyone is. So when there's a star that's shining bright, it's actually a win for everyone because that bright star may bring a, a lot of new opportunities for the whole platform. And I know it may seem silly, but yes, sometimes I read like those manifestation books and I think I was reading like the secret or it was one of those books like that. And it said, you I know, have you have read that. I love that one. I love, and she has a lot of books. There's one about gratitude, the magic and, and the power. I love them all. And I think actually, it, yeah, it was one of those books. And she said, you know, whenever you see something in the world that you want, that's the universe showing it to you. So the best way to get it is to be happy for that person. Like if you really want to get married and you know someone who gets engaged, instead of feeling envious, like, oh, why not me? Why her? That's telling the universe, no, I'm angry about this. I don't want it. And you're actually blocking your blessing. But if you think in your heart, like, I'm happy for her and you give love, then you're saying yes to that thing. And the universe responds to that. And you, you become closer to achieving those things. And what you said really points to that dynamic. And I think it's important to start sharing more positive messages like this. I, I actually really appreciate you speaking on that. With pleasure. I think you have a really beautiful mentality about things. And I think that that's really important. And I think that this needs to kind of be an example. And so as someone who has risen to the top, you are setting a tone for other models. And there are models that you have no idea that are looking up to you, you know, and they're watching you and how you, when you first started, you were researching and trying to learn from girls that you knew were doing well you have probably more than you even realize models doing that, looking at you. And so, you know, realizing that and setting this tone, one woman's success is everyone's success. And there is more than enough members to go around. When you decide that you are good enough for something, there's no one stopping you. It's stopping you. Absolutely no one. When you say to yourself, yeah, they're probably right. I'm aiming too high. Well, you're you're probably aiming too high because you've decided that. So you're going to stick to whatever you decided. Beautiful. I've loved this in this interview. You have such a beautiful energy. And I noticed that about you when I met you in person in Portugal. And, you know, I'm, I'm really happy to see models like you that are really shining their lights. And I just encourage you to keep shining, keep setting a beautiful tone because, you know, going back to that example of Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan inspired so many young basketball players to show them what's possible. And your story does that. You know, you have only been in the industry for six years. You came in here without a studio. This is, you know, this is what shows your hard work because it's not common for a lot of models to get as far as you have without a studio. I will say something. Please that I swear the proudest other thing about this previous contest was the fact that top three was occupied by independent model. 
both me, Lucy Moonlight, and Natasha Irene are independent models. So I think that if we could could do it, everyone can. No matter if you're a beginner, a studio, or an independent, you can do it. And I was extremely proud about that. You have no idea. You have no idea. It meant a lot for me. A lot. And that is, I'm extremely impressed about that. And, you know, it really does speak to your hard work. And it's really oh, inspiring. Speaking about Lucy, uh, right now when we're going to go to Cyprus, we're also going to meet with uh, Lucy. Oh, her. she's coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the reason for gathering is because on the 19th, it's my birthday. So <laughs> oh my celebrate. goodness. I want to end the interview by asking one final question, which yes. is what is something you're the most grateful for in your life right now? And it can be anything. My family. Mm. Definitely my family. And my cute little rascal dog. <laughs> <laughs> boss of me. Yes, Charlotte Mavis has a boss. People would not believe, but she does whatever she wants with me. I swear it's true. <laughs> Listen, that's how I feel about my dog too. She is just, she would do anything and I, I can't stay mad. <laughs> I would come home and I would find my uh, lipstick chewed up or uh, toilet paper everywhere around the house. And I'm like, Teeny, what the hell? And she would be, <laughs> <laughs> what can I do when I see those puppy eyes? I'm like, come here. <laughs> Never do that again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you so much. Most than welcome.